Hello, everybody, and this is Stacey Chalemi. I'm from The Advisor, and today I have an amazing guest. It is it is Mark Doherty, and I, he is an amazing author, and he is just a wonderful individual. He is part of our podcast community, and he has his own podcast on our show. So I highly suggest that you go on there and listen to his previous podcast. They are outstanding, and you will be just blown away by his personal story, and some of the things he did to overcome some of the obstacles in his life. I'm not going to give too much away because I want you to go check it out yourself. But today he's here and he has an amazing topic to talk about. It's about getting better. How do we get better and the process of getting better? The things we go through trying to get to that point where we actually feel good about where we're at in life. So Mark, I'm so glad to have you on the show <laughs> and you make my day. Every time I see you, you just make me smile because it amazes me because, you know, you've been through so much in life and no matter what, you are just a bubbly, happy individual and you look at life so positively. And I love that about you. I really do. From the moment I met you, you just put a smile on my face. And today you want to talk about getting better. And I really think that's an important topic. So Take it away, Mark. Let everybody know. How do they get better and feel good about themselves? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, Stacy. They as always, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I think this is my third podcast with you. And as we kind of recap before we started, uh, the first podcast was really about my life from fear and anxiety through cancer and then kind of coming out on the other side all in one fell swoop. And then uh, then the second podcast kind of dealt with the, the feelings that I had and probably a lot of people have when they are sick with a, with a pretty major illness, uh, the feelings of no loneliness, you know, how you, how you kind of work your way through that. And so, and so I thought today it might be nice to kind of talk about what happens if you come out on the other end. And, yeah. you know, one of the things that you had mentioned uh, earlier was that you do meet a lot of people that are angry. And and it's funny you mentioned that because about, uh, as you know, I had cancer at 48 and then my colon burst when I was 54. So it was about 56 or 57 when I finally started coming out of this medical funk. And... Um, and I was having dinner with my daughter and, she, and I was angry and I knew I was angry. And when I'm angry, I pick at people. And it was kind of my way, it, it was the way I kind of dealt with my anxiety when I had panic attacks. I would take kind of take control of the situation. I would use humor a lot, but in, in some ways kind of a cutting way to kind of have this feeling of being in control over the situation. In any ways, I, I started to really get tough on my wife. And I'm not one of these F-bombers or use the C word kind of guy. Yeah. But, I I, but I poked at her a lot. You know, there was, never, there was never any violence in our relationship or anything like that. But I was angry. And I was, I was not only angry at my wife, Sally, but as as time went on, I realized I was angry at my doctors for all of the um, medical mistakes that they made. And I had a ton of them, which I outline in the book. You mm -hmm. know, I was angry at my employer. I remember at the end of the year, you know, there was a time where I didn't work for six months, but I was the controller of the company and I had a very well-trained staff and I would call them once a week kind of give them an update of my health and then see how they were doing. And then monthly, Sally would take me in on a weekend after the month after the month was over and I would come in and do the financial statement. So even though I wasn't working every day, I was doing my best to at least keep the information flowing. And I remember yeah. talking to my boss at year end. And by that time I was back to work and he was usually a very generous guy at bonus time and he's like you know mark i don't know that i really want to give you a bonus this year you know because you missed so much work and i said well you know john i i understand that for sure but i said i kept the department going i said it could have easily failed if i hadn't trained them well 
And I said, I, I don't know if you realize this or not. I'm sure you did, though, that, um, you know, I came in every month to keep the financials going and, and doing all that stuff. And I said, I said, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you don't give me anything. But, you know, I'll let you decide that. And he wound up giving me a little bit, which was nice. But I just felt, you know, again, with the um, with the loneliness, maybe even underappreciated by some people. And yeah. so my my daughter suggested I go back into therapy. And uh, as we've talked on previous uh, podcasts, uh, therapy has helped me out a lot. If if nothing else, if nothing else, therapy forces you to talk. And yes. I'm a real I'm a real believer in that. And and as we talked, I think in the last last podcast, I see a lot of these reels or. You know, you see them on, on Facebook or Instagram where they say, you know, the top 10 things to do to, you know, to be a rock. And, you know, yeah. one of the things is don't share your feelings. And it's like, I, I just think that is such a bullshit comment because, yeah. you, you know, you walk around harboring all that stuff and all it's going to do is eat at you. And yeah. I'm, a, I'm a real believer in talking. So I, I, I took my daughter's advice. I went back into therapy and, uh, you know, it took me a while, but I finally got over that anger that yeah. I needed to, that I needed to get over. I think therapy is a great thing because I think one of the biggest problems people have is their repressed emotions, having those oppressed, repressed emotions. <clears throat> for so long, I feel personally that after a while you become numb because you hold back all those emotions and more build and more build up and more build up to the point where you have all these things going on inside you and you don't even know how you feel because there's too many emotions. It's like a whirlwind, right. you know, and unless you verbalize <clears throat> how you feel to somebody else with an unbiased opinion, it's very hard right. to heal. Well, and as, as, through the process of talking, you know, even if, as you do a podcast, things start to pop in your head and you realize, Oh God, yeah, this or that, you know? And so yeah. just the fact of talking and, you know, and then getting down to the point of just admitting that you have a problem in and of itself. I think, you know, half the problem is just being aware that you have a problem. You know, right. a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of us uh, this day and age, we dance through stuff like, Oh, it's not my problem. It's your problem. Well, you right. know, actually it's probably your problem, you know? Yeah. And, th and that kind of flows into, you know, after the anger, one of the things, and I, I think I get misdiagnosed by this a lot, and I'll explain myself. Uh, you know, it was funny, my wife, my wife and I had had some problems after I got better. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think the, you know, my wife was my caretaker. I was sick for a long time, and you you start to become numb to it. And so anyways, my wife went into therapy and we both share kin our Kindle books, have all the books come to the one and I read mine and she reads hers. And so yeah. anyway, she, she started seeing this therapist and all of a sudden all these books on narcissism come up and it's like <laughs> how, to how to live with a narcissist, how to get rid of a narcissist. What is a narcissist? And I'm like, I'm like, Sally, what's what's all this narcissist shit? You know, I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what but where I'm leading with this, and I honestly I don't think I am, but you know, when I was when I had anxiety, I didn't have anybody to talk to. And what I meant by that was it hit me when I was so young, Stacy, as you know. And I didn't know what was happening to me. And at the time I was 19, I was in the Air Force and then I went to college. So let's say there were eight years there where I didn't have money or let's say the wherewithal to get the mental health uh, um, help that I needed. And so what I had to learn to do was rely on myself. I didn't have a good relationship with my father. I thought my mom was kind of unsophisticated. You know, she had seven kids. Uh, you know, her job was to take care of us kids. And yeah. so I had to, I think in order to fight through this stuff, I had to develop a strong ego. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize it at the time. It wasn't until I became, you know, adult in my fifties and really got into some deep therapy that I realized my uh, ego was so strong. 
Now, I, I think a strong ego could could hurt you. You know, I had a I had a buddy one time that I was venting to about my wife, and he goes, uh, he goes, Mark, it sounds like your ego is getting in the way of your happiness. And I thought that was really kind of a profound statement to make because I have in my mind is is probably a lot of uh, narcissists have is that they they have a slant on how the world should be, you know. And then, especially when you're married and your spouse doesn't see the world the same way you do, uh, yeah. it can create an issue. Oh, and, so, and, and, and so I, I had to develop a very strong ego, and I think it is strong. I think it's still strong um, in order to survive. Now, the one thing I've noticed, and I put this in my book, is that I realized it helped me survive, but there's a point where maybe you don't need it as much as you think you do. Mm -hmm. And I, I, and I, I think that was kind of an aha moment for me to realize that because, you know, we all have an ego. We all want to be right. We all want to do the right things. Uh, we want to make good decisions. You know, that's all, I think, part of, of having a healthy ego. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I have a lot of self-confidence for, for a guy who, had a lot of anxiety and stuff. I knew what I was capable of doing, you know, and so I ha I had to have that strong ego to kind of pound my way through it. Yeah. Now, as I started to get better, one of the things I realized was that I I felt like I did have a strong ego, and how was I going to get rid of that? And mm -hmm. I, I think the I think the answer, and I I still have problems with my strong ego. I I notice I can still get mad pretty easy, and we'll talk about it maybe a little bit too uh, in, in dovetail with this is resentments. Mm -hmm. You know, I I had harbored a lot of resentments, but I I can feel my ego because I'm a very I think I'm a very good arguer. And as as my therapist said one time, I thrive on conflict. And then for 15 minutes, we fought about the word thrive. I just came <laughs> right at her. You know? <laughs> so maybe she was right. <laughs> so, but, but, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of get your thoughts too, but, um, I, you know, I, I think there's a time and a place to have a strong ego. I think there's a time and a place when you have to let it go. And yes. maybe walk away. A hundred percent. I think there is a time when you have to stand your ground and and stand for what you believe in. And there are times when you have to just let your ego down and just walk away. You know, over the course of the years that I've gone through and I've dealt with with issues in my life, I've learned that sometimes putting your ego up and trying to debate the person and trying to prove that your, your train of thought is the right way of thinking is only going to make matters worse. So sometimes, you know, if it's not going to be a ben beneficial, if it's not going to get you anywhere, if it's going to make matters worse, then you need to put your ego aside and say, what is the best choice in this situation? What is the best choice for me? you know, as a, an individual, because your health comes first. And there are times where I've learned that I need to put my ego down and just walk away and find a peaceful solution. It's not about proving that I'm right or wrong. It's about me doing what's best for me. And sometimes just walking away from a controversial situation is the best for people because you, you want to be at peace. At the end of the night, you don't want to have a brick on your shoulder. You want to be able to enjoy life. And you can't do that if you're trying to prove you're right, if you're arguing with people, if you're holding resentment. These are things that are just going to dig us into a, a deep hole with, with a lot of negative energy, you know, maybe lead us to anger, frustration, panic attacks, you know, all these different things. So sometimes it's just it's just better to just not prove that you're right. You know, even though deep in your heart, you know that you were right in the situation, just walk away from it and find find a way to figure, you know, ha have someone else deal with the problem. You know, if it's something that has to be dealt with, find somebody that's capable of doing it that the person will can relate to. And then just you personally walk away. You know, those were you're, you're absolutely right. And that, that was so hard for me to do, especially 
while I had my anxiety attacks and then I was sick. You know, I it was it was my way of controlling things and I wasn't I wasn't going to give up. You know, it's interesting now that I've been retired for a few years. You know, it's amazing. And uh, I'm sure probably most of your podcasters aren't in my situation where where they're retired. But when you're yeah. retired and let's say you have your financial life and maybe your health life, uh, you know, in, in a good space, it, it's amazing the amount of stress that goes away just with not having to go to work every day worry about money, raise your kids, you know, da, 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 da. It's amazing yeah. how life, life stresses can, can dominate your life and pile on. And, mm -hmm. and with that, it's given me time to reflect, you know, I, I think in defense of my, myself and my personality and my ego, I was so wrapped up in fear and anxiety. I, I, I struggled to let it go. As a matter of fact, it, it was really interesting. My son called me today and he's having some, he has a, um, our grandson is out of wedlock. He had a child, but didn't marry this gal. And anyways, they're having some issues. And my son Taylor called me today and I could tell he was really anxious. And yeah. first of all, it made me feel, cause he has a, he has a kind of a court date this afternoon that they have. And, and he was very anxious and, it made me feel so good that he called me to talk and it was on his way to work. And, you know, it was being able to say things like, Taylor, first of all, you haven't done anything wrong. So there's right. no right. reason for you to be upset and nervous, you know, relax. The judge isn't going to call you up there and start going over your life. That's not what this is about, you know, right. and, and then this is out of your control. You have an attorney let the the attorney take the stress just relax and and i and you know it was funny because we've talked about anxiety on your podcast many times and this is a, this is a case where like meditation doesn't help like my son i could tell was having a maybe not a panic attack but he said dad i'm really anxious and i could hear it in his voice and so yeah. i just said you know taylor take a deep breath when you get to work, go into the bathroom and splash some cold water on your face, I said, and then start making sales calls, you know, get out of your head. And yeah. I, it, made me, it made me feel so good that I was able to call him and help him do that because, again, I didn't have that. And so I had to have a huge ego to tell me I could pound through it. And, yes. you know, their their lives the rub, you know. 20 years ago, I needed that strong one. And, and then now I don't. And, you know, you brought up, you said something uh, just to as we were talking about resentments. Um, boy, this is a this is a uh, this is a subject that runs deep with me because um, I harbor a lot, I harbor a lot of resentments, you know, from my father, uh, yeah. you know, for from my wife when we were going through our tough times. And, and I would say that's probably one of my biggest faults is there, you know, somehow all those are just buried in the back of my head. Yes. And I always, I all my, always tell myself, Mark, just let it go. It's not important. Right. But, you know, in, in, in sadly in the heat of mo of some argumentative moments, boy, they surface and they surface quick. Yes. And, you know, and again, I'm a controversy. I, I don't shy away from controversy, uh, either good or bad, let's say. But um, it's something that I wish I was better at managing. And right. I, I, I don't know if you, ha you, you know, you probably, yeah, I mean, we all have resentments in our life. Um, it's tough to manage those. I've gotten through, I, I, I've i had a, a life full of a lot of different types of obstacles come my way. And it got to a point where I realized that not being able to let go was actually doing me more harm emotionally and physically than it was the, than just by letting it go. I It actually made me feel better mentally and physically my health improved because I noticed by 
having all this anger and resentment, I was actually, my immune system was actually breaking down. I could feel myself so emotional and I can feel myself starting to break down emotionally, like physically, where I wasn't as strong and I was starting to get medical issues. And I, it was all related to me holding on to resentment and holding on to anger. And I learned that the past is the past. We cannot change the past and we can only focus on the present. So I learned to actually take the people in my life that caused me negativity and let them go. And then I, the people that were part of my life that I can't let go, that they'll always be around some way, somehow, I had to forgive them. I had to look at them honestly and say, why did they do these things? What was their past like? Where, what kind of environment did they grow up in? And I had to look at, I had to put myself in their shoes and try to imagine why they are who they are today and why they said and did the things they did to me. And then when I did that, I realized who they were and why they did the things they did. And I realized they had a lot of issues in their own life growing up, which caused them to be who they are today, not by choice, but by environment and by the, own pro the problems they had. So I forgave them. And I also spoke to them and told them how I felt. You know, this was later on. I didn't t you tell them right away. This was like right. maybe 30 years, 35 years later. I approached them and mentioned things that were hurtful to me. And I explained how I felt growing up. And we were able to actually work on it together and actually make a new present for ourselves. We were actually able to build a relationship that we never had before. And then with some people, I let go of the resentment, but then they do things every once in a while to stir up that resentment. And uh, subconsciously, <laughs> all the things they did come back in my head and it starts to whirlwind. And I have to try to let go of that, realizing that it's not my problem, it's their problem. They're behaving the way they are because they have issues that they have not dealt with. These are not my issues. These are their issues. They're behaving erratically and they're behaving the way they are. And they're doing negative things towards me because of the issues they have that they have not yet dealt with in their life. And they don't know how to deal with it. So they push it on. Like you said earlier, you pushed your frustration and your anger out on other people through the way you spoke and the things you said, because that was the only way you knew how to vent your anger. So in that respect, you know, we have to understand the individual, understand where they're coming from, and we have to learn how to forgive people. And we don't have to have them say, I'm sorry to us. We could forgive them for their actions and just focus on our present and just focus on what we have as a person. So let go of those 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 negative issues and say, hey, you know what? I am, I, you know, I might these people might cause me resentment. These I might have resentment, but currently I have a beautiful wife. I have I have this. I have that. You know, I have my life back, and focus on the positive. You know, I'll say two things. Uh, uh in response to what you just said. Uh, one thing, and I'm a real believer in this, I, I think it's important when you have resentments that you voice them to the person who gave them to you, let's say, or triggered them. I, yeah. I, I, I'm a real believer in, in rather than harboring those resentments without telling, let's say you're, it's with your husband, you know, or whoever, yeah. you're, you know, and, and you hold those back you're I think you're hurting yourself by not letting whoever that person you know got you going on these resentments they should know that you have these resentments yes but the big but the bigger issue and I think I will say I have a problem with this and you're a better person than I am for it <laughs> is that word is that word forgiveness that is a tough that is a tough deal for me. And I don't know, I don't know if it's a male thing. Mm -mm. Um, but when people 
people have crossed me and I don't get that, I'm sorry. Like, like my father, my father wound up saying he was sorry to me at 60. Yeah. Geez, I, I often wonder where I would have been in my life, Stacy, if he would have said he was sorry to me when I was 25 or 10 when he hit me, you know, or whatever. Yes. So, I, you know, I, I still to this day, and again, I'm not proud of it. I'm aware of it is that word forgiveness. And I, I, I have a tough, you know, I, I find it a, a sign to some degree uh, as weakness. And mm-hmm. again, I, d- I don't know if this is a male thing. If it, if it is, I'll own it. Um, yeah. But, but, but this whole kind of being weak and ask, you know, giving somebody forgiveness. I, you know, I will say I'm a guy who is not afraid to say he's sorry. You know, I've, I've apologized to people all my life, you know, and, and I don't do it kind of the way I kind of react, Stacy. is I'll say what I have to say, and I'm pretty blunt and mm-hmm. I know it hurt. And I know it hurts people's feelings. I, you know, I know it. So what I do is, and then let's say we, let's say it's with my wife. We'll just make this. And, and, and so then we have an argument and then I walk away. And typically what I do is I think about it afterwards, after when the heat of the moment is down, you know, maybe it's a day, maybe it's, it's a week, but I'll typically, if I realize I'm wrong, I'll say, I'm sorry. Now, yeah. what what I what I have to watch out doing is say, hey, honey, I'm sorry, but and then I go into 15 more minutes of kind of hammering her, you know. Um, so I, I do think it's important to I think it's important to ask for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, I would say at times it's harder for me to give it, you know, and, and I'll own that. I, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm a genius as I wrote in my second book, but I'm not perfect. Maybe that'll be my third book. <laughs> Maybe that'll be your third book. <laughs> I'm, per- I'm, per- I'm perfect, just ask me. <laughs> no, but that whole thing, you know, and you're right. I, I think a lot of life and letting shit go is about forgiveness. It's about yeah. forgiving. It's about forgiving uh, that person and actually kind of forgiving yourself and in, in, in saying, you know, Mark, it's all right, just let it go you know it's like what's the big deal you know just let it go and And we all have that ability to do that we do and 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 it's not it's not an easy task you know it definitely is an easy task you know i i had to go through therapy myself to learn how to do that you know because you know i would say 98 percent of the people that have done things that were not nice and have harmed me have never said I'm sorry just that two percent maybe so do you hold all that resentment because I know for some a lot of those people if I was to go to them and speak to them and I was to ask them for an apology for their actions most of those people would argue with me that they did nothing wrong even they would justify it try to justify their actions (laughs) And then you get, <laughs> and then what happens? Then the other person gets angry and upset, and then <clears throat> something occurs again, whether it's words or unsettled emotions, you know, and then you walk out of there all stressed out, you know. So, you know, for me, I had to learn how to just let go. And that was not easy to let go and forgive them. But you'll never have a lot of times when you, let go and you forgive somebody you're not ever going to have that same relationship with that person but those unsettled emotions will be released from your body and you will feel enlightenment because you don't have that heaviness in your heart because that's what is so so dampering to someone is is that heaviness we hold in our heart you know from all the people that have wronged us and we feel hurt by it because we never expressed it but I did express it in therapy. I I shared all my emotions and that was painful. You go, yeah. you know, expressing your emotion is a very painful thing. But once you get it out and once you learn how to cope with those emotions, you you definitely feel like a brand new person. You know, one of the things that I find um, 
easy to do. And I think it has to do maybe with my uh, ego slash self-confidence. And, and, and I really believe what I'm about to say, you know, I've read this comment about you, you are the sum of the five people you hang with. Mm-hmm. And one of the, and I truly believe that. And yeah. I have found myself, especially as I've gotten older, you know, when you're in the work uh, environment or you're at home raising kids, you come in contact with a lot of people that you probably wouldn't give the time of day. But for whatever reason, you're dealing with a bad boss or a coworker at work. You're dealing with your buddy, your, your child's uh, friend's parent that yes. you know you normally wouldn't probably deal with one of the things i learned now as a retired adult and i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing but if you got people toxic people in your life get rid of them they're doing you no good and yeah. and i can't you know that's one of the probably the big things i learned uh, as an adult is that you it's okay to say no it's yeah. okay to tell this person hey you're not you're not my kind of guy anymore you're a nice guy I'll have you over for a barbecue once in a while but I'm not I'm not going golfing with you anymore you know I I can't you know and I I've had friends as adults that I just I I have to pull away from them they just they don't do me any good. And, and I, I will tell you, that's the other thing too, that I, I, I have this, I have this kind of ongoing battle with my wife. It's, it's everybody loves Sally. Oh my God. She, and she's going to heaven because she's married to me. I, if I had a dollar for that, I'd have more money than Elon Musk. I mean, <laughs> oh, oh my God. But like I tell, but I tell Sally, I said, honey, it's not my job or my goal to be everybody's buddy. And when yes. I have a sense, you know, when I'm kind of a poker, I have a, I have a sarcastic sense of humor. I poke at people. That's how I am. And if you don't like it and we have that moment, you know, I walk away, I, you know, I, and it's not that I'm chicken to fight, but if I'm not your guy, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm I, not here I, I feel, and I, I, I'm not like trying to blow smoke up anybody's ass. I am totally fine with that. It's like, right. if, like I even do it with my kids, you know, for my, my relationship with my daughter, for whatever reason, ebbs and flows. Now, I think any normal father maybe would be calling her constantly and, and you know, what can I do for you? It's like, I get the sense, you know, she doesn't want to talk to me. I back off. Yeah. I'm fine with that. You know, I'm not here. Again, it, it, I, I'm almost a, you either love me or, or leave me. That's right. kind of, you're either all in on Mark Doherty or you're not, you know? Right. And, and again, I, I don't, I have plenty of people that I know, like in La Paz or here, that I know that I'm friendly with, but I don't hang around them. You know, yeah. I know they're like not my cup of tea or they're more friends with Sally than they are with me. Right. And, and again, I'm okay with that. I, I think I think probably being alone for so many years with you know fighting my fear and anxiety, I developed my own sense of uh, of a cocoon, let's say where I was okay. You know, it's okay to be alone. It's maybe not okay to be lonely. I think those are two. Those are the same word. They sound like with alone and lonely, but they're two different things. Yes, you can you can be alone and be totally fine and not feel lonely. Right. You know. And and again, we talked about that. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but yeah, I th- I think getting getting rid of toxic people, I think, is a must for anybody. And 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 then you know you start to let go of these resentments and these you know these feelings you have constantly. Yes. You know, one of the things I know we're probably getting semi close to wrapping up. The two things, and you tell me when to stop and say shut up. The the yeah. two final the two <laughs> well you can tell me to shut up that doesn't mean I will you can you can hit the you can hit the mic button <laughs> but and we we talked about this and I'm a real believer in in individual success I think you have to have resilience mm-hmm. you have to love yourself trust yourself and and at the end of the day you got to believe in yourself I, I, I 
I, you know, I really think the successful people in these in this world are people who go through adversity and come out the other end semi okay. You know, yeah. I, I I still tell people, you know, even though it may appear like I got my shit together, I mean, uh, it 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 took a long time to get here. And there, you know, if if you read my book and you saw me today, you would almost see two different people. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's amazing how far I came. But the, the part of it was, um, you know, I think I'm a resilient guy. I think I used humor a lot to get me there. But I also, and I think this is really important, Stacy, for your people listening, is you have to have belief in yourself. You yes. have to trust that you know what's best for you. And and you got to take action. You know, you yeah. can't sit, you can't sit at home. I, you know, I think you look at any successful person. They're not sitting at home smoking weed, watching TV. You know, right. it's like if you got if you can't find find a job, but the best you can do is get a paper route, then start with a paper route. You know, it's it's easy to sit at home and and whine about your issues, or you can get off your ass and get going. And I'm as I've said many times, Stacy, you know this because with the things you've been through, it's not easy. It isn't. There's no magic formula. I'm no. not going to tell you to do deep breathing today and tomorrow you're going to be the most relaxed person in the world. It life just doesn't happen. It right. it ebbs, it ebbs and it flows, and you just got to stay with it. Hope you surround yourself with good people, and mm. and and keep moving forward. That's you know that's my that's my coaching. And I agree with you. I, I think one of the things that you said that was so important, and I, I've even talked about it in my own books, is and I talk about it when you know I'm on podcasts, is you gotta get rid of the toxic people out of your life because yeah, toxic people bring toxic energy. That energy goes into you and that really pulls you down as an individual. It sucks the energy, the positive energy right out of you. And it also causes that unsettling emotions that you don't need in your life, you know? And it's hard to move forward when you have toxic people around you because they're always pulling you down. So well, it's I, I was going to say, oh, excuse me. And think about it. If you're doing better than your buddy, they resent you for that. And yeah. if you're doing worse than your buddy, they think you are, uh, you're a loser. So how do you win with people like that? You can't. You're always, you're never going to be good enough for that person. So you yeah. have to learn, you have to learn um, to trust your own instincts, know what's right. And yeah. if that person's not, you know, and that doesn't mean they can't, people can't get on your shit once in a while. But, right. you know, if you're, if you're, you know, when I, when I made all that money, you know, uh, when I, uh, when I wrote my second book, you know, everybody told me it was luck, you know, when I was doing it. And then right. when I started to lose money, how can you be such an idiot and lose money? I mean, they come at you from both ends and we've, as adults, we've all seen this and you got to learn that you're doing, you know, trust that you're doing the best you can. We all make mistakes. For every yes. guy who made a, a billion dollars, the same guy lost millions or billions. Yep. They, we we all do. We all do. And you'll hear that from the greats, some of the most successful people on, on the planet, you know, in the United States. They talk about how many. <laughs> you, you heard it from me, Stacey. Some of the greats. Oh, you mean beyond this podcast. <laughs> yeah, beyond this, you are great. You are great. But beyond this podcast, like Alex Amosi, you know, he had like seven failures in, in oh. seven in in his fitness businesses and you know and then tony robbins talked about like when he first started you know speaking i think he rented out a room for 1500 people and 15 people showed up but he said he spoke like there was 1500 people in the room you know and and you know there's so many people out there that you know that you just you fail you fall you get up and you 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 learn from your mistakes and you move on and that's what life is about you know and if you fall you have to get up you have to get to have that resilience that you were talking about and just get up because and and just you know look at yourself and say i could do it i can do it and focus on those goals and those dreams and those aspirations you have and just focus on them and say i could do it i could do it i can do it and then you know one day you will do it you know 
You know, I, I find for me, Mark Doherty, uh, and I've learned this as I became an adult, it's like um, I almost do better when people tell me I can't do something. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, I'm going to do this, you know, and they go, oh, no, you can't do that. It's almost like you've just set the the wheels in motion, you know? Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. And again, one one person's can't uh, will will help them move forward. And, but 20 people that can't will make them go down, you know? Yes. You, exactly. And again, it, it's it's having self-confidence and knowing what you're capable of doing. And, and then looking, and then look at the person who's telling you, you can't do it. Exactly. You know, I always look, I always, you know, I honestly, without sounding egotistical, if some, if somebody can do something, I, I feel nine out of 10 times, if they could do it, I can do it. You know, right. I have, I have different skills than they do. They may be a techie guy. I may be a financial guy. You know, we all got our skills and we're yes. all good at something, but in general, you know, and I've had buddies that they're like, you can't, I go, hey, pal, if you can do it, I can certainly do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the narcissist in me. <laughs> it's like a good challenge, I think, you know. <laughs> I should go back and read all those books in my wife's Kindle, huh? <laughs> I think you're an alpha dog who likes a challenge. Usually the alpha like challenges. <laughs> conflict, conflict. <laughs> So if you had to take today's conversation, you wanted to summarize it, what are some important aspects you'd like to really emphasize to today's listeners? Yeah, you know, pro probably primarily, uh, you know, initially it was kind of the ego thing. I think uh, everybody needs a strong ego, but you need to keep it in check. Uh, I think the thing that you really got me thinking about today was that word forgiveness. I think that is a that is a word or an action that I still stumble with and you know uh, I, I I'm not at a point in my life where I have to walk around forgiving people all the time because because right. I I don't allow people to hurt me like that anymore mostly because right. I don't I don't care what they think you know yes, and, exactly. but 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 I I think that and then of course you know um resilience and believing in yourself I I think whether you suffer from fear and anxiety or whatever it is I I think you know, the world is so fast paced now and you see so many bright people, you see so many wealthy people. I think it's hard to not compare yourself with those people, but just know in your mind, you know, the world works with everybody. You don't have to be, you, you know, you don't have to be at the top of the barrel. You don't want to be at the bottom of the barrel. You know, there's nothing wrong sometimes. I don't want to use the word mediocre or average, but sometimes it's okay just being in a good space where you're at, you know? Yes. Um, you, you don't have to, you don't have to set the world on fire all the time. You know, that's not, yeah. you know, those people, those people tend to burn out. And then, you know, you read a story about them where they had millions and now that, you know, they die poor and destitute. Who wants to do that? You know, exactly. it's like, you know, it's like manage what you can manage, do, do the best you can rely on good people. And, uh, just uh, let things happen. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And so, before we close, I remember I had I have a I had a speaking mentor, and he, you know, I always looked up to him because he was doing so well for himself. And one day I wanted to be on his level, and he's like, "Stacy, we will never be on the same levels. Right now, I'm on thirty three, and you just started." <laughs> he said to me. He, said, he was like, he's like, one day you will get there, but don't compare yourself to me, he said, because we're at different levels right now. He said, be you and be the best you can be. And he said, and then he goes, I, I have the confidence that I know that you will be on my level. We just not going to be on my level at the same time. You know, you know, it's a great, this might be a great wrap up for this. Talk about a guy who was just a regular guy and now he's been pick to be Harris's vice president is Tim yeah. Walls. He was a teacher and a coach and just a regular guy. And then right. he ran he ran for Congress. Then he ran for governor. He's now running for uh with Harris as the vice president. Vice Talk about there's an opportunity where just a regular guy just followed the bouncing ball, probably had people tell him he couldn't do something. And yes. he said, Bull, bullshit, I'm going to do it. And look at him. I mean, 
any it can happen for anybody a hundred percent i've know? i've so many people that it's, it's happened to people just by they're at the right place at the right time and they got seen by the right people and they saw their qualities and they got they got opportunities thrown into their lap it's just being the best you can be being who you are doing yes. the best you can and if it's meant to be it will happen you know if, if you're a star people will find you yes they will they will a hundred percent yeah hundred Son. Now, if people want to find your amazing books, where can they find them? Okay, they're on they're on Kindle uh, as uh, as eBooks. I didn't think anybody would want to read a printed version, so I didn't go that route. But they're they're in Kindle. One is called Reset, and then the other one, uh, Reset, is about my cancer and my um, my fear and anxiety. And then I wrote a second book called I'm a Genius. Just ask me. Um, I did really well in the stock market in 2020, really well. And then I wound up losing half of it. But, uh, you know, bo both books have some tidbits about how I how I went through life. Hopefully uh, there's some tips in there that uh, your uh, podcasters can use to help them get through life. You know, I, I'm 68 years. I, I will be 68. I've been around the block a few times. And, you know, it's it's nice that one of the reasons I wrote the books was just to share my my experiences with others. You always, as we've talked many times, Stacey, you always feel like you're the only person with these issues and you're absolutely not. Right. You know? Yeah. A hundred percent. So where can people find you if they want to find your website or they want to find information about you? Where do they go? Well, I'm I'm on Instagram. I'm not a big social media guy. Uh, it's Mark underscore C underscore Doherty. And then um, and I, you might have some of that information in the notes. And then in my books, at the end of both books, I have my um, uh, I have my uh, email addresses. And so if you want to contact me, read my book. <laughs> <laughs> And Stacy puts all this stuff in the, in the uh, podcast notes, and so uh, feel free to contact me. I'm uh, uh, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody who wants to uh, talk about things. Happy to do it. Thank you so much. This has been amazing, Mark. Like always, you have such great. You know, your story is great. You are a great person. And the knowledge that you obtain through your, your life experiences is outstanding. And you turned you turned these obstacles into something where you were able to teach other people and help other people. And, you know, and now people know that they're not alone. And, and you know, the greatest thing about when you tell your story is that you know, people don't have to have the exact story as you. They could have one paragraph could relate to them or a sentence can relate to them and they feel a bond and they they read through your book or they listen to your information because they realize that you ha they have something similar with you. You know, and, and that's all you need is one similarity to and, and people feel a connection. And that's that's all that matters because the rest of the knowledge you share could change a person's life. And that's what we're all about here is changing right. people's lives. And you know, you're doing it right now. And I, I commend you for that. And I thank you for everything you've done. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me, Stacy. Oh, like always, it's a pleasure. Thank you. You have a great day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye bye.